Indian Point is slated to close within the next few years, and that brings up a whole lot of issues still to be resolved. What to do with spent fuel rods, how to deal with the loss of thousands of jobs in Westchester, and how to fill the void left when Westchester and the city lose 25% of its energy supply, and that is what IP has supplied. Is solar power the answer? How about wind? What about natural gas? That's also controversial. And what about a combo of all the three? Well, investigative reporter Thomas Zambito, he's been digging in and looking for answers. Tom, it's funny, maybe this comes under the heading, be careful what you wish for. With the shuttering of IP, um, and we know how long this debate, literally for decades, has gone on, there was a celebration in the environmental community. Terrific. Now, potentially, to fill the void could be either alternative energies or natural gas. But before we get to that, the question people said is, okay, if IP's lights go out, how do we get, um, how do we replace that energy? A common refrain I heard was, hey, this has happened before. The plant got shuttered for, you know, eight months at one point here. It got red flagged and... The lights never went out in Westchester. Prices went up a little bit, but not enough that it was a revolt for the community. Is there a problem this time around when it shuts down where we get energy from or not? Well, you're talking about a long-term shutdown. So over a sustained yep. period, it would be a little bit different than a short-term shutdown when other genera uh, power generators can come in and fill the gap. But we're, we're talking about in the future how the sort of state's energy grid will, will be reconfigured essentially after Indian Point shuts down. Who will come in? Will it be solar, wind, other renewables, gas plants? Um, there are three gas plants being constructed in, in uh, New York right now. And so there's a lot of debate on where mm -hmm. the power gap, who will fill the power gap in the well, years to come. Well, let's take first the environmentalist uh, argument, which is, as you said, wind, solar, alternative energies. Um, give it a chance, they'll be able to fill the breach. Some people are skeptical um, how long that would take and whether or not that's realistic. What's the sense you've found in your reporting? So right now, a very slim portion of the state's uh, energy is provided by wind and solar hydropower. The most comes from hydropower up in Ni Niagara Falls coming down. So um, right now, the storage capacity for wind and solar isn't there, the battery storage. In other words, when the, you know, when the sun isn't shining, you know, when the wind isn't blowing, can we generate power? So uh, that's one argument. It really, th th it's not as reliable as it could be just yet. Environmentalists say it will be, uh, and they also say that there are plenty of energy pr efficiencies that we can pr pursue in the coming years to get the demand down. Now, in the balance, hanging out there are these natural gas plants, and the environmentalists like Riverkeeper or other groups don't want to see those come online. Oh, first off, yeah. the point when they argue, Tom, that, hey, um, in effect, the state uh, not negotiated in bad faith, but didn't present that this was not only an alternative but a likely one. Do they have a point? Uh, were they hoodwinked here um, that they were political allies to close a plant, not knowing that the alternative could potentially be just as bad, if not worse, from their perspective? Uh, perhaps. I mean, that might be an argument they'll bring in front of the courts. But I think that you know that certainly was out there they knew that these plans were were in the works it's just a matter of what the state's priorities i don't know that the state you know the state has made a, a strong commitment to renewables wind and solar they're pushing a lot of projects uh, whether or not they're concentrating on the gas plants and those coming online right now uh, it's not clear. The environmentalists will tell you they're not doing enough to make sure those don't come into play. But again, you know, the state, you know, has tried to block a, a pipeline that's coming into one of the plants in uh, uh, upstate in Orange County. So they have, they're aware of them. Um, they don't want more fossil fuel coming into the state. Remind uh, the audience how many people currently are getting en electricity or power here really through IP. Well, it's, it's much of Westchester and a portion of New York City, so it's 2,000 megawatts. It's a significant impact to our, our region. Now, it seems you can't do any stories if there isn't some tie to some corruption probe. Right. And this story, believe it or not, has yeah. a Prococo angle to it. It does, yes. You remember Joe Prococo was the Cuomo All administration. All well, yes. Yes, I'm <laughs> sure you do. Discussed it here many times. Um, uh, Cuomo administration aide, he was, he was accused of trying to get his wife a job with one of these natural gas plants, competitive power ventures up in uh, Orange County. So uh, we're told by Riverkeeper that they may bring that up 
uh, in the coming weeks that they may challenge CPV's permits based on the fact that um, it was illegally gotten, essentially, that there were bad actors. Um, what's your gut tell you? Uh, it is an election year that always plays into this Correct. one way or the other. Um, in terms of the Cuomo administration and what they will get behind or stay silent on or stand in the way of, if you read the tea leaves, which way do you think we're going here? I think politically the, the administration is very much behind wind and solar. Uh, and other renewables. I think uh, its political base also supports that as well, so that's significant. But the marketplace has, will have a say in all this as well. You know, natural gas is cheap right now, yep. so it's, it's, it's alluring to many people. Whether or not wind and solar and hydro can, can come up to speed and the prices are as competitive as natural gas, that's a factor as well. You know, solar is just 1% of the output in the state right now. Key date here we should keep in mind? Uh, well, there's, there's, there will be a number of key dates. I mean, I think, I think it would be interesting to see that uh, uh, several of the natural ga gas plants are supposed to come online in the next few weeks or months. Uh, what will happen? Will there be environmental challenges mm. in the four? Well, um, obviously, uh, this is going to be something we'll keep an eye on. But, uh, Tom, I appreciate yours. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rich. And you can read the full story on lowhud.com right now as well as in Sunday's Journal News. Up next, we're going to talk sports and a bizarre incident lands UFC superstar Conor McGregor in jail. He's also facing felony charges. We'll be right back.